Now, receptor cells, these special cells that can detect dimly are found in your sense organs, the, your eyes, ears, uh, tongue, nose, and skin. Now, we don't have time to look into all of these in detail, but in the IGCC syllabus, you do need to know about the eye as an example of a sense organ. And you need to know uh, the, the detail of the structure and function of the eye, how it uh, can focus uh, on things far and, and near, and also how it can change the amount of light that enters the eye. So let's go through the basic structure and function of the eye. Now let's start off at the back of the eye. Now on the back of the eye, I've got various layers. You've got the sclera, which is the tough white outer layer of the eyeball. Um, it's shown in gray here, but it's the outer layer there, the protective layer of the eye. Just inside that is another layer called the choroid, shown in purple here. That is actually black and that stops any internal reflection of light, and it has all the blood vessels in there which supply uh, the, the eye with the blood that it needs. The most important layer is this yellow layer, the most inner layer there of the eyeball, the retina. This is where the light sensitive cells are. We call them rods and cones. This is where you detect the light. This is where the receptors are. And all that information then passed down the optic nerve to the brain, where you can then interpret what, that, what you're seeing. There is a couple of other points at the back. There's the blind spot, which is where you can't actually see anything because if the light hits there, then there's no receptors, there's no light sensitive cells there. So your brain has to kind of fill in the blank there. And there's also this fovea, which is like the sweet spot. That's where you want to focus light ideally. That's where the highest concentration of rods and cones are. If we move to the front of the eye, we can look at a few structures there. The cornea, that curved front section, it's transparent and it's where light first enters the eye. And it's curved there to help start bending the light. You really want to bend the light in, it's called refracting the light so that it focuses nicely at the back of the eye. The pupil is the dark hole, the, just the, the, where the light can enter and get into the main part of the eyeball. And the size of the pupil is controlled by the iris, which is that colored, uh, the colored part of the eye, which is made up of muscles, which can then get bigger or smaller to change the size of the pupil. The lens, very, very important. The lens is what focuses the light the lens can be fat or thin, depending on the ciliary muscles and the suspensory ligaments, which can change the thickness of the lens, depending on whether you're looking at something close or far away. So this table just summarizes nicely each of the structures in the eye and what job they do. So let's go through the iris reflex and then how you focus light. So with the iris reflex, when you've got very bright light coming in, you don't want um, to damage the retina. So you want to change the size of the pupil to make it smaller. Now the iris is made up of two types of muscles, circular muscles in rings and radial muscles that work in sort of lines around, as you can see from this diagram. Now in bright light, you want your circular muscles to contract because that will then um, pull in um, all these different circles and constrict the pupil so it's a much smaller hole and that, and you want the radial muscles to relax to allow that to happen and in dim light you want the opposite to happen you want the circular muscles to relax but you want the radial muscles now to contract to pull out the iris to make it much bigger and dilate the pupil to let more light in. In terms of focusing light the proper name for that is what we call accommodation, changing the shape of the lens. If you're looking at something near, you want quite a fat lens to focus the light quickly. And if you're looking at something far away, you want a thin lens to focus that light uh, directly onto the back of the eye. Now you need to use the ciliary muscles and the ligaments, suspensory ligaments to do that. It's one of those things you just got to learn these off by heart. But if you're looking at something far away, you want the ciliary muscles to relax. What happens then is the suspensory ligaments get pulled very tight and that pulled the pulls on the lens to make it very, very thin. If you're looking at something very close, ciliary muscles actually contract, that slackens the ligaments, and the lens becomes much fatter.